Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Ushanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. В эфире программа Ушанка Show. In today's episode, I want to discuss the events of June 22nd, 1941, attack of Nazi Germany of the Soviet Union. This year, 2021, marked 80th anniversary since the beginning war between those two countries. As you may know by now, I grew up in the Soviet Union, I went to the Soviet schools and I learned history by the Soviet study guides, учебники. So, in our history books, June 22nd of 1941 marked the beginning of Great Patriotic War, Великая Отечественная Война, which actually misled in translation, because Отечественная it all means like fatherland, so Отечество it's fatherland, so actual translation should be Great Fatherland War, Великая Отечественная Война. This fact is very important to remember if you ever get into argument online or in person with any Russian person, because talking about World War II, Russians will be talking about their Great Patriotic War, which is just a war Nazi Germany against Soviet Union, while most Westerners will be talking about World War II as the big picture, its allied war against Axis. This is what I actually have to do quite a lot on my Russian YouTube channel, explaining uh, angry Russians that when Americans say they won the war, they mean war mostly against Imperial Japan, because America got attacked by Japan, and they won against Japan. For the United States, war in Europe was like a secondary war. The main war was in the Pacific Ocean. While for the Russians, when they talk we won the war, they talk about war against Germany and events when the Soviet Union joined uh, the war against Japan uh, was like once again secondary in that case. But before we start talking about Great Patriotic War, Velika Atechna Vaina, I would like to mention something about World War II generally. In my humble Soviet opinion, World War II did not make any sense. Think about it. Japan attacked the United States. Germany attacked Soviet Union. This is like hyena attacking sleeping elephant. There is no chance in the world Japan could win against the United States or Germany could win against Soviet Union. Like, let's compare Japan with the United States. In 1941, Japanese population was around 74 million people. United States population, 133 million. So twice more population. And if we compare sizes of the countries, United States is 26 times bigger. You can fit 26 Japans in the United States. It's just, there's no comparison. <laughs> Japan had no chance whatsoever. Similar odds for Germany. Size of the Germany, 823,000 kilometers, square kilometers. The size of the Soviet Union, 8,650,000 square kilometers. So 10 times Soviet Union was bigger. And population, 80 million in Germany, 170 million in the Soviet Union. Double. So once again, despite the German might, the Soviet giant was way bigger, way larger, with way more population. Still, despite this horrible odds, Japan attacks United States and Nazi Germany attacked Soviet Union. It just doesn't make sense mathematically and logically. But let's talk about the events of June 22nd, 1941, when at 4 o'clock in the morning, German army crossed the border and attacked Soviet Union. The Soviet historians came up with a standard description of what happened, and pretty much anyone who grew up in the Soviet Union will repeat a word for word if you ask him, so what happened on June 22nd, 1941? They will tell you that Nazistska Germania внезапно и вероломно напала на Советский Союз, which translates as Nazistska Germania, Nazi Germany, or sometimes they will say Fascist Germany, which is not 
exactly correct. Suddenly, внезапно, and вероломно. This is really interesting word. If you try to translate вероломно into English, it'll be uh, treacherously or backstabbing, which is already interesting, right? So Germans backstabbed the Soviet Union, but exact translation I'll say will be trust shattering. So Veralomna trash shatterly attacked Soviet Union. But let's break it down because there's a lot of interesting uh, messages can be discovered in this sentence of Vnizapna i Veralopna suddenly and trust shatteringly. So let's take a look at the word Vnizapna suddenly. It's interesting and good choice of the word because they could say Niajidana unexpectedly, which is really similar word, right? Suddenly or unexpectedly. But unexpectedly makes Soviet leaders look stupid. How you wouldn't expect a giant army of, what, 3 million uh, people gathered on your borders? You didn't expect them to do anything. So, like, yeah, we knew there was a big army, but suddenly... We didn't see them coming. We just thought maybe they gathered for R&R &R on our borders. Uh, so that's interesting choice of the word. They didn't use неожиданно, unexpectedly. They used suddenly, внезапно. But to be fair, we need to give one point to Hitler because he managed to concentrate in a pretty large army, 3 million people, almost 4,000 tanks, almost 5,000 airplanes right on the border with the Soviet Union. And still, when he attacked on June 22nd, it was suddenly. Like, Stalin didn't expect at all uh, the attack, which is, you know, kudos to Hitler in that respect. But on the other hand, we need to take that point away from Hitler, maybe even several points, because what the heck was he thinking? I didn't read Mein Kampf, but I read somewhere that in that book Hitler mentioned that one of the biggest mistakes of the Germany in the First World War was war on two fronts. So he claimed that Germany only can win having a one-front war. So he started war against Poland and finished it. He started war against France somewhat finished it because southern France was never occupied and he started pretty much war with England and then before finishing that war he turned around and attacked Soviet Union. So this is one of those cases that I say totally doesn't make any sense. Why would Hitler against his own conclusions in his book Mein Kampf decides to go after way larger enemy, or at that time was his friend, remember they signed the friendship agreement with Soviet Union, and he still decides to break his main rule not to have war on two fronts and start the war against way larger and stronger enemy. It doesn't make any sense. And I read some historians and just the history boss explaining that Hitler was like a high on his victories like a drug addict high on cocaine and he thought he was invincible. But I think the only logical explanation was provided by Hitler himself in his letter to Mussolini that he sent him right before attacking the USSR. And he wrote that I need to cut that news before Stalin hangs me with it. So... This sounds like Hitler knew some something about uh, Soviet Union plans and he was in a hurry to beat Stalin to it. All right, so we talked about Vnizapna suddenly attacked. So let's talk about second word, Veralomna, trust shattering. This is really interesting. Like, why would Stalin trust Hitler? If he probably, I don't know if he read Mein Kampf, but at least he probably had some uh, pointers provided to him by his staff that in that book Hitler mentioned that 
Eventually Germany need to move east and take over living spaces. Forgot that German one Liebern Strong something. So in his book, which was like a Nazi Bible, he states that eventually Germany needs to move east and take over spaces cleared up from a Slavic population like Ukrainians, Russians, Belarusians and establish German Reich and uh, provide those uh, fertile lands for the German settlers. So why would you trust Hitler and then you claim that he shattered your trust by attacking in June 22nd, 1941? This is a big giant uh, minus for Comrade Stalin. And as our history book claimed, this attack on June 22nd was the beginning of great fatherland war or as I said they translate as great patriotic war I'm not sure if you're aware but it's technically second fatherland war first fatherland war happened about 100 years prior on June 24th kind of interesting Germans attacked on June 22nd French attacked on June 24th 1812 so the war of 1812 in Soviet history and Russian history is called Отечественная война 1812 года, the 1812 Fatherland War. And it has a lot of similarities with 1941, beginning of the war. Napoleon uh, crossed the border and he didn't have much problems uh, going all the way to Moscow and he actually ended up occupying Moscow. Similarly, Germans didn't have a lot of problems after attacking Soviet Union and they basically almost got to Moscow as well. And both armies, French army and German army, started having serious problems when a Russian winter arrived. Another interesting sentence that I remember from uh, my Soviet history uh, study guides is that when Germany attacked Soviet Union, Soviet Union was sucked in to the World War II. So this is quite interesting. This is kind of explains why Soviet historians wanted to create a separate war, which was called Great uh, Fatherland War. And it stood kind of separately almost from World War II, because apparently before uh, June 1941, Soviet Union had nothing to do with World War II and only German attack made us be sucked in in this war between great imperialistic powers. When in reality the Soviet Union joined the party on uh, September 17, 1939 when according to the agreement with Nazi Germany they attacked Poland from the east but it was presented completely differently in Soviet history books. It was called Asvabaditelny Pachod, can be translated as the Freedom March, so it wasn't really like attack, we just kind of marched into the eastern Poland. And the reason why Soviet Union did it was to protect the Slavic population of western Ukraine and western Belarus, so I guess to protect it from Germans, so it sounded, sounded pretty much in our uh, lessons that Soviet Union like, oh my goodness, look, Poland just collapsed. Uh, government of Poland and the state of Poland disappeared. So we have these empty spaces that have a Slavic population and we have to move in to protect them from Germans. And I feel kind of stupid to admit it because, you know, I had an excellent grade in my uh, history lessons back in the USSR. But I never asked this obvious question. Yo, yo, uh, why would Hitler allow Stalin just to roll into the Poland and take over almost a half of the Polish territory and there was no war, no uh, fighting between Germans and Soviets? Uh, why would Hitler just allow that easy for us to move in and take over Western Ukraine and Western Poland? It's almost like, you know, you see... German wolf uh, taking down Polish horse and suddenly there is a Soviet bear shows up out of the woods and supposedly Soviet bear was very very scared of the German 
wolf, but it didn't um, deter him for just coming like, hey, dude, I'm taking half of the horse. And German wolf was like, okay, I guess it's cool. Uh, you know, we're friends, I guess. So that's another part which is kind of a strike against the theory that Stalin was afraid of Hitler. That's why he was doing everything possible to postpone the war. Uh, the behavior of the Soviet Union in 1939 actually shows totally opposite. The uh, Soviet Union wasn't afraid of Nazi Germany. They actually were, like, Germany uh, did the bulk of work uh, attacking Poland and fighting uh, Polish troops. And Soviet Union just came uh, two weeks later when pretty much the main fighting was done and they just rolled in and took over a huge chunk of territory and Hitler totally didn't mind. And I want to mention one more thing before we wrap up about the events of June 22, 1941. In our history books, uh, they also uh, claim that Germany attacked with предвосходящие силы противника, so pretty much a German army was superior in numbers. And it's kind of interesting. I read a lot of like a history of the World War II. Not, sorry, my bad. History of Great Patriotic War. Like the whole giant volume of it. And of course I was still too naive to pay attention. But it was kind of strange that Soviet historians knew exactly how many tanks Germans had, how many troops, like numbers were exact. And when they talked about Soviet troops, it was really a vague, I think is the word. Just kind of like, yeah, there was way more Germans. They had a superior um, numbers in tanks and everything else. And, but there was no exact numbers on the Soviet side, which kind of strange. You know, we end up winning. So we had all the paperwork, all the numbers, all the documents. But for some reason in 1941, uh, Soviet historians, they were really shy to mention exactly how many millions of Soviet soldiers were uh, by the border with Germany, how many tanks and, st and stuff like that. All the other tricks that uh, Soviet uh, historians did with the Soviet math, uh, they would count every single German tank. So they would say Germans had 3,712 tanks when they attacked Soviet Union. Meanwhile, Soviet forces had only 1,475 T-34 and KV tanks and large quantity of obsolete tanks. So this guy interesting. They count every single tank in German army. But in the Soviet army, they would mention only the newest modern tanks. And then the rest of them they call obsolete. But though, like, they weren't outdated comparing with German like that. Uh, PZ RKW1, right? That was you can't even call it a tank. It was more like we call it tanketka, a little tiny thing with the machine gun. But they're still counting those in German uh, forces, but they don't count BT7s. They just told out oh, those were outdated. And we had 5,000 just BT7 tanks manufactured in the Soviet Union, and quite a few of them were on the border with Germany. So that's what we had in our Soviet history books. And I just looked up online, and so it looks like slowly and grudgingly, uh, Soviet, now it's Russian historians uh, admitting the more realistic numbers. So now they say that Germans had 3,712 tanks and Soviets had 12,782 tanks. So it's what, almost four times more. So now, who had a superior numbers, right? Uh, same with the airplanes. Germans had 4,950 airplanes on the eastern bo uh, front, while uh, we had 10,743. And another cute detail, the Germans had 70% of their air force uh, on the front with the Soviets, while the Soviets had only 40%. So those 10,000 planes were only 40% of our Air Force, while Germans' 5,000 planes was 70% of the Air Force. So numbers were superior, but not in uh, German favor. We actually had 
way more tanks, way more airplanes, and way more soldiers. Okay, my friends, that's all I have for you today. Uh, please comment this video. I'm very interested in what do you think, what do you know about the beginning of the great patriotic war, great fatherland war, Velika Otechna Vaina. And we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. shoot me email if you would like to have a signed copy thank you and if you love my channel and would like to show your support please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka show for as little as one dollar you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet 